another episode of Gila's cooking series. Today I've decided to make one of the most traditional Persian dishes of all time. This dish has been in the Iranian culture for hundreds of years and certain cities like to prepare it differently. So my family is from Tehran and we prepared the classic version like most people prepare it this way. Before any of you Persian moms or grandmas that may be watching this think that I'm doing something incorrectly, I'd like to make a disclaimer that I was born and raised in America. It's obviously going to be more difficult for me. I wasn't raised in an environment that taught me how to make this. I just picked up the passion for it and I wanted to teach myself. So that some things may be different than the traditional version, but if you want to know how to make my version, then please keep watching. Bring your attention over here so I can show you the ingredients. Two boxes of Gorma Sabzi, which is all the chopped up herbs necessary for making Gorma Sabzi stew. And these are not pre-fried, so I'm going to have to show you guys how to fry them. Then you're going to need a can of red kidney beans. Sometimes I use two, so it just depends on your preference, whether you want more or less kidney beans. Um, one large onion. You're gonna need some beef stew. So I'm not sure if they sell this at all the markets, but I purchased this from a Persian market. You're going to need ground turmeric and some salt. You're also going to need white rice for this dish, preferably basmati rice, because the stew is always served on top of white rice. But for this portion of the video, I'm just focusing on how to make the stew. Let's make the stew, and then at the end, I'll demonstrate how to make nice white. As you can see, there's blood on this, so I'm going to rinse it off and get rid of the blood and then I'll show you guys how to dry it and then start preparing it. This may be super strange to some people, but this is just what I've always done every time I've made a gourmet sauce. The beef is wet now, so I just lay it on paper towels, and then I cover it with some paper towels, and I just dab it. That way, it can absorb some of the water before I start cooking it. Chop the onion. Heat up some oil. I'm using olive oil in a pan. Start off with medium heat. Now add the onions and begin to saute them. While the onions are sauteing, I thought I would fry the warm sabzi herbs. Also, I'd like to let you guys know that the ingredients in this is just parsley, green onion, leek, and fenugreek in case you guys wanted to uh, buy those herbs yourself and chop them up and fry them that way. But these are just pre-chopped, they're not pre-sauteed or anything. So we're going to fry them right now. Frozen herbs are warming up. Okay, so now the herbs are not frozen anymore and what you do is saute them first a little bit without adding any oil. So this is just the herbs, nothing else in the pan so that the heat absorbs some of the water that the herbs have because they were frozen and then we'll add oil. My olive oil is almost done so I'm just going to use the last bit of it and then I'm going to use regular canola oil for the rest. This is not my ideal oil, but obviously it works. Okay, so the onions are all sauteed now and I'm going to add the beef. Just 
just stir the beef with the onions for a few minutes. The beef, as you can see, begins to produce water. That's why you have to be aware that you should bring the heat up to a high. That way it'll get rid of the water. Continue cooking the beef for about 15 minutes until all sides are evenly cooked. And make sure that the herbs are sauteing. Those take a little bit longer, so don't think it's ready. Like You need to make sure it's all sauteed fully. Now that the beef is cooked where we want it, we're going to add some turmeric. Now add two to three cups of water to the pot with the beef and onions. As you can tell, the color has changed and it's much darker now, indicating that it is ready to add to the pot with water and beef now. don't like my stew too watery but if you feel that it's too thick and you just like it more watery just keep adding maybe one to two more cups of water now I'm going to add a little bit of salt okay this is the rice I'm going to be using I'm gonna add three of these measuring cups Here, we're going to add some salt. Let the rice cook for maybe 10 to 15 minutes on medium heat, but it cannot cook fully through because we're going to drain it and then bring it back. That way we can make tatty. I forgot to mention the most important part to form sabzi. I didn't show it in my ingredients part of the video, but this is called limu amani, which is dried lemons. And it's very important because warmasabzi is supposed to be a little bit sour. I like it really sour. Most people do, but it's all up to you how many you want to add to it. I think I'm going to add maybe like four or five to the stew. So at this part, that's when you would add the dried lemons to it. And you would add the red kidney beans. And then you just let it sit for honestly like one or two hours on like low heat to just cook. <laughs> don't know tadik is like the greatest part of a Persian cuisine it's so delicious okay tadik means tahadik which is the bottom of a pot so it's when you leave the rice to cook a little bit longer and the bottom layer of the rice becomes all crunchy and you have to be careful though because it's really easy to burn but I'm gonna demonstrate how I make that now the rice is slightly cooked not fully though so we're going to drain it so watch what I do My mom taught me that a great way to make tadig is to add a little bit of white yogurt to the bottom of the pan and then you add a little bit of saffron to that, just a little bit and then you mix it like this. Add a little bit of rice. So now that I've made a thin layer of rice at the bottom with the saffron and yogurt, I just add the remainder of the rice. And then I just Cook it for another, I would say, 20 minutes for the rice to fully cook and for the tadik to become nice and golden and crunchy. The warmest has been cooking for 
over an hour now and we're ready to serve it. This is the final result of my warmest I hope you enjoyed this video and learned how to make it.